Hello and welcome to the channel. No sooner the set up than it's um, started pouring down with rain. So this is by far and away the calmest I've seen it for over a week now. We've had some really serious winds, storms, rain, really awful weather. I've been out a couple of times but just not been able to film anything. It's been absolutely impossible. So I saw a break in the weather, took my, took my chances, took a gamble and uh, here I am. So I'm all set up. Rods are out fishing, been out in the water for about 15 minutes now, um, and it stopped raining. So the hovercraft's on its way out, flying across the Isle of Wight. I don't know what hovercraft do, do they fly or do they float? I suppose they fly really, don't they? I don't know if it's actually class is flying, but yeah, that's the hovercraft on its way out. And behind me, the lifeboat station, just get my ear out of shot. So, the lifeboat station get my ugly grid back into the shop so yeah all, I'm all um I'm fishing so the plan what am I gonna do so I've got some ray baits I've got bluey and squid and sand eel I'm gonna give that a go for the rest of the daylight hours now and then I think once it's dark I'm gonna swap over to a three hook flapper on one rod and just go for some whiting um, I want a couple for the pot really take home for eating so I'll have a go for the whiting for a while. I'll leave one rod out for ray. It tends to be predominantly undulates and thornback rays here. So fish south born a couple of weeks back and last week, last week, totally unfilmable. I went down with Ben um, and we fished a mark down there and it was a struggle to keep a line out in the water, let alone to fish it properly. I, was, I had a couple of tangles, so I've modified my rig. So one of the things I've done for this time is I'm using a drop down pulley rig as opposed to a straight pulley rig. Um, I did try an up and over, but I got I got fobbed off a little bit with the weather last time with the rolling surf and all the rest of it. I had a couple of tangles. And if it's not fishing, if it's not presenting the bait right, there's no point putting it in the water. So I'm running with a drop down pulley rig and we'll see how it goes. Go. Gonna do another bluey bait. It's very soft. Just run the filleting knife across the top of the backbone. Try not to hook too much of the bone, but it's very soft flesh, which is partly which makes it so attractive. I'm going to turn that into two baits, I think. And then I think, because that's a, a long, thin bait, I'm just going to put that on a needle. I'm thinking, I'm quite tempted to double that up with a sand eel. So, normal routine, tail off, gill covers off. And just behind the eyes, exposing the contents of the uh, of the head or the skull. That bluey is literally only just staying on that needle. Very soft. I'll flip it over so it's skin side to the sand deal. I'm going to try and lash it like that. So bait and elastic. It's medium-ish bait and elastic this one. And start lashing the two together. Or whipping the two together and that bluey is actually taking the shape of sand eel a little bit but obviously it's going to have a whole nother level of attractant with all the oils and, and fish juices that are coming out of it and I tend to um, double up the wrappings or whippings at the head end go down to the body and then where the panel hook is going to go give that a couple and then come back up to the middle um, I don't tie any knots or anything because I find it all binds itself up so that is a sand eel and bluey cocktail and that one is just a bluey on its own so I have a little bit of a tidy up keep everything pretty much squared away get my hands are clean and then they'll be ready for the next bait change and the next cast out.
it is absolutely still. It's a beautiful afternoon, early evening. I mean, it feels like evening because it's getting dark, but obviously the clocks have changed now. We're on winter time and it is 25 past four. Feels a lot later than that, but early days yet. Got the whole evening to fish. First set of baits come back, absolutely mullered by crabs. So I left them out a little bit too long. So they were about 35, 40 minutes. I'm gonna go for 30 minutes for these. In fact, I'm gonna bring one in in a minute. I've already prepped a double bluey wrap ready to go. So it'll be time to bring them in in a minute, bait up and get them back out with some fresh baits. I'm getting the stereotypical little tap taps, you know, little rattle rattle rattles where it's either something trying at it but the bait's too big, the hooks are too big for it to take or because it came back stripped, both baits came back stripped last time, there's crabs out there working away, beavering away, nicking my bait but I'm uh, going to give it a couple more minutes I've made myself a brute, oh sorry excuse me, so I've made myself a brute age old fisherman's trick, if anything's going to stimulate a bite making a brew wheel or a brew and a chocky bicky in fact chocky bicky sounds pretty good I think I'm gonna have to go I've got a date with a chocolate biscuit yeah one of those rod tips it's just just tip 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 it's not a fish bite that's crabs picking away at my bait I'm sure of it anyway I've got my brew I need to sort out my chocky bicky and then see how we get on not quite dark yet when it's fully dark, I might swap one rod to a free hook flapper and try for some whiting. So, it's now dark, and as soon as it's got dark, straight into the whiting. So, not a bad sized fish for here really, but I'm sure there's plenty more. That happened pretty quick, so. I've now started baiting up with um, sand eel on the bottom of the three hook flapper, and black lug, plain black lug on the top two hooks. So I'm gonna get this one back and uh, bait up and get myself back out still got one rod out for the razor so still got bluey out on one rod on a drop down pulley but I've just switched over to scratching on a um, on a three hook flapper just for a bit of sport and just to see what I can get so one white in see how many more well a bit of a surprise to me but they're all right to catch not bad fish white in number two now that is a bit of a clunker for round here 41 centimetres, that one. So I don't know what that comes out. I'm not going to weigh him. I don't think he's weighable. But that one is the one that I am going to take home with me. So that one is one for the pot. Um, 41 centimetre whiting. It's better than nothing, isn't it? Second whiting of the evening. He's a bit of a clonker. Nothing's taken the black lug. Everything's taken bluey straight off the bottom. So this one was on the drop down pulley uh, rig with a with a big ray bait on the end of it. So, I'll take it. Decent sized whiting like that. It's pretty good to be honest. I quite like these to be honest. I know a lot of people don't, but. Um, second whiting of the evening and they're getting bigger. I don't know how big they're gonna get, but I'll take this one. She's a beaut. So I know people don't like these and they get plagued by them, but you know, everything's got its place. And this isn't a place, this is a doggy. <laughs> Pretty little thing, skin like sandpaper, yeah. So, hope I don't get too many of these this evening. But he went off like a train and he felt like he was something totally different once I was reading it in. But I'm gonna get this one back and he's gonna wiggle and wiggle. Good tip with these grab hold of the tail and the back of the head. If you hold them like that, they can't rough you up with the sandpaper. And I'm just gonna go and get this one back. Hope for something better. So I've just had a third decent sized whiting for this evening and uh, I'm a bit, I don't really want to handle it but this thing's still alive and I don't know if that whiting spat that little fish out or whether it was attached to the fish. Um, it's hard to see isn't it? So there, here he is, look, he's looking at you. <laughs> Put it up to my face, you can't see it can you? That third whiting I've just had wasn't as big as the previous two and out of the previous two I've, I've released one of them. Um, I'm not just going to take loads of them but I do like them so I've kept the biggest one of them so far and uh, that last one I've caught I'm just going to go and put it back. Oh, I don't know if you can hear it bouncing around in the bucket of water. 
try and make sure he's fit to go back. He certainly sounds strong enough. So I'll just grab him and give you a quick show. So another decent sized whiting, but I've got what I need. Look at that mouth. <laughs> All right, calm down. He's going back. So I'm just gonna go and get him back in now. It's one of the uh, cruise ships that's gone out from Southampton Water, heading out, out into the Solent. Everyone on there is having a party tonight. Dressing up for dinner, partying on to the wee small hours. And back to the rocks. So recently I posted a video that showed how to make bait loaders and I thought I'd take this opportunity to show how I'm loading up um, bait for doing black lug onto small size one hooks on my three hook flapper. I don't know if you can hear in the background but it's quite an interesting aircraft or a pair of aircraft that are flying around at the moment. Just looking up to see if the one's coming over. Ospreys I think they're called, the ones with the um, twin propellers that face forwards but they can also twin propeller and take off. So the sound you can hear, there's some kind of military exercise or something going on but there's a pair of Ospreys, not the birds but the aircraft flying around even though it's pitch black out there. So they're military aircraft, they're obviously doing something important. Um, so yeah, so black lug. So there are many, many different ways of doing this. I understand that, I know that. Um, but what I'm gonna show you is the way that I've, I'm doing it at the moment. So black lug, size one hook. And basically what I'm doing is every time I put it on the hook, I'm giving it a twist and then putting it through, twist, putting it through, all the way till I've used about half a worm. I'm getting two baits out of each of these worms. And the back end of it, the tail, is pretty much useless anyway. So, so have a quick look, because obviously I've got all the light for filming, so I can't see what I'm doing, because it's dark down here. Um, all I've done now, is I've stitched that onto the hook but it won't stay there it won't want to stay there so bait loader modified for smaller baits so it's a very low one and that's the beauty of these if you're making them yourself you don't mind changing and adjusting and basically you get the hook and hook it into the question mark shape and it runs parallel like that so it's now running parallel and because it is a small bait, it is a little bit tricky, but now the trick is to make sure that that small bait does stay there and does fish and, and present itself properly, is to use some elastic. And basically, without covering the hook point, which I nearly did then, is elastic it in onto the bait loader, making sure that the hook point is kept clear and even taking time to make sure that it's properly marked down and then a little bit round the middle and then I just pull it off so it's still attached to the bait loader and then you just draw the hook back move it to one side and with your line you slide it off the bait loader and then give it a quick check to make sure that the hook points all clear and that you're happy with it and maybe dress it over a little bit and move it around and do whatever you got to do but that is a small parceled black lugworm bait on a size one hook so i'm going to get on and do the rest of these black lug's not doing too well tonight the whiting that i did catch coughed out little tiny like bait fish white fish um, and all three of them took uh, Bluey. Bluey that was meant for a ray. And I've still got a rod out there for a ray. But at the moment, Lugworm is catching me dogfish. And Bluey is catching me whiting. So I thought that last one hit a bit hard. A double shot of whiting. Um, both smaller than the previous ones that I've had anyway. These are both going to go in the bucket, recover, get them unhooked and get them back in. 
what do they say something like a watched rod never bites <laughs> put a camera on a rod tip and it will never show a bite So, we have a little bit of a change of track now, so still using the drop down pulley rig that's got Camasan uh, 4 and 3 for the panel. Um, I'm going to put a whole squid on. So, using the bait loader, position the squid. In fact, I'm going to do through his head. and then into the bait loader. Just get his tentacles round in the right place. You don't want your tentacles in the wrong place, do you? So, on the bait loader, hooks in the locator, dress the line down to the end, and basically I'm just gonna whip that all in. The reason why I do this rather than stitch them in is when it comes to taking the baits off. It's a lot easier, a lot quicker, because you can see the, the hook um, and the way the hooks line relative to the line um, I just find it easier for stripping the bait off when it comes to do your bait changes so I'm just going to whip that line all the way up almost to the top back into the middle and then just pay attention just so the bait doesn't slip around the eye of the hook and that will stop it from moving around and it's in the centre of the body now. Again, there's a multitude of ways of doing this, but obviously with the panel hook, the normal routine is three turns, and then hook it back in on itself. He says as he gets it around the wrong way, and hook it back in on itself and dress it out. Now, just because the way that's going to sit and it's not quite sitting right. I'm just going to put a little bit of elastic around that. Just to hold it in place. Okay, so that is still on the boat load on, on the boat loader. On the bait loader. So it's still hooked up, but it's a nice dress formation like that. So you just put it back and take the hook off the locator and then slide the whole thing off. There's the bait loader, and there's the hook showing proud on that bait. I'm going to clip that up and get that out. The whiting seem to have slowed down, gone off the boil a little bit. Hopefully, this will give me a chance for something else to see my bait. Um, something else, a chance to see my bait and see what we do. It's still early days yet. There's still plenty of time. I've got plenty of bait. It's been quite a good night so far. I've had about seven or eight I had a double shot didn't I so I think I had eight white in one of 40 41 centimeters and a doggy and doggy was a welcome change to be honest just to be different for the white in but um, and he went off like a screamer that was a good bite I got all excited I thought that might have been something else but you know a doggy's a doggy at the end of the day so I'm gonna get this clipped up and get it back out see what else we can catch it so it was sort of interrupted then, I thought I had a bite, but nothing came of it, nothing developed. So I'm gonna I'm work my way from a brew. I brought a mackerel with me, even though everything seems to have gone nuts for bluey, nothing really interested in sand eel, squid, little, little bit of interest in the black lug, but not much. It all seems to have been centered around the bluey tonight. So just to satisfy my own curiosity and just because I don't want to refreeze it again, I've um, prepped two baits for mackerel, so, same as what I did for the bluey, just wrapped them up on a double bait needle because it's all soft, soft bait, elasticated it all up, I've put one on the loader ready to go, um, and really I'm going to bring the rods in, swap the baits over, give them 30 minutes and then call it a night, so I'm just just curious to see if the, um, if the mackerel fires anything up. Um, I've heard that, I don't know if it's undulate or thornback rays, I think thornback rays, quite like mackerel, but then I've also heard that doggies are quite partial to it as well, so I'm going to have a bit of them a brew, get the rods in, swap the baits over, give them one last chuck and 
I'll give you the sign off in a bit or I might have caught something you never know you never know hmm. oh that's worth talking about here we go so just like talking about the brew taken the label off it but I think you can tell what it is if you um, if you used to spot it on a supermarket shelf um, I only ever buy it when it's on offer sometimes it's really expensive sometimes it's on offer and it's less than half price but it's coffee with the milk and the sugar all in it you just put however many teaspoons that is to your taste so if you carry that and you brew kit um, three or four spoonfuls of that and that is your milk your coffee your sugar it is a little bit sweet um, but that indestructible it's not made of glass don't have to carry milk around um, that's good it's all a bit quiet it's all a bit quiet bait change 30 minutes and if not I'm packing up see you in a bit so on that bait change I hadn't even seen the bite on that one just move that out of the way um, he's a teeny teeny tiny one compared to some of the others we've had this evening but another white in he's absolutely mullered mullered that squid a whole squid he's taken a whole squid absolutely mullered it that's going to be fun getting that out that's because I didn't spot the bite I didn't spot the bite so it's been in there a while and obviously then he's absolutely Let's see if we can get something out here if I'm pulling faces I'm concentrating I don't like damaging the fish if I can get them out and get them back in then get on with it just because I don't want them doesn't mean really has he's absolutely I don't think this one's gonna go back performing minor surgery yeah? this one ain't gonna go back I can't leave the hook in him because it's too big absolutely destroyed it oh there we go You might go back. Always worth having a decent set of forceps and forceps that lock together. Just helps out. Helps out when you're trying to get the bait out. Right, I'm gonna see if this critter goes back. So I just saw a little rattle on the um, on the last rod out for the evening. So I thought I'd better get it in, have a quick check. And I've, you know, I'm gonna pack up for the night now. But, <laughs> freaked a big bait, put a big mackerel on it and got two white in two white in on the same panel on a panel, so the one's taken the circle hook on the top and one's taken the 4 o on the bottom with a honking great big bit of mackerel on there there was so these two small ones, I'm going to do my best to unhook these they're both lip hooked actually so they're quite cleanly hooked um, both lip hooked I've got to empty my bucket of water so I'm going to revive them in a bucket of water and let these two critters go. So that's it for me tonight. I think the final count was 11 white in, two with two double shots, um, one doggy. No matter how big a bait I put on, whole squid, big bluey, half a mackerel wrapped, everything. The white in just nailed everything. No straps, no Raymonds, um, but it's been enjoyable nonetheless. Oh, I've got some of that Gucci weed on the thing. One thing I did notice though is most of the bigger white in all spewed up small fish, bait fish. So they're out there feeding off these bait fish. Um, enjoyable evening altogether, to be honest. I'm going to pack up now, head for home. And I think I might come back tomorrow. I haven't got work for the rest of the week. What should I do? <laughs> I'm going to go fishing. <laughs> Right, so thanks for watching and I look forward to seeing you again sometime soon. Bye for now.